How's everybody doing today? This is Pete here at Spawn Fly Fish and today I want to share one of my favorite little minnow patterns and I've, I've given some love to the rainbow trout and different bait fish but today I think we're going to focus on a little baby brown trout and I like to call this fly the butter cookie because everybody likes a butter cookie and this thing does get eaten. In the vise, I've got the A-Rex SA254. This is a size four, so we're not going for a huge streamer. We're going for a pretty small profile. The bead, I've got a 7.5 millimeter gold spawn football uh, tungsten bead. And just to get that situated on the hook so that it's not gonna slip and slide on us, I've got some lead-free .020 wire. I'm gonna get a few wraps on there. And this is not going to uh, be used for adding a bunch of weight. We're just using this pretty much to hold that bead in place up, up at the front. Get that clipped around over the edge a little bit. And I'll do the same thing on the back side here. This wire just give us a little bit easier start when we put our thread on. I'm not going to nick it and, and cut it off right away. And once you've got that, just make sure the full meaty side of that bead is, is downward. And when you're looking at that shank, and if you do that before you tie the rest of your fly, when this sits on the bottom, that's gonna be much more effective this way because it will rock a little bit side to side. It won't let that fly sit still. And it, it of course keeps that back of the hook up at an angle. All right, for the thread, I'm using some uni thread 6 aught, and this is camel. Uh, cut that tag end off. And now, when we get to this wire, I'm going to start with some f angled wraps, 45 degree roughly, up and back a couple times. Keep that angle. And all this does is keep the thread from slipping between the, the wire as we start, if you do get the, the thread in between those wraps, it can separate. So we want some positioning wraps of thread, and now we're gonna come in with some solidifying wraps that pull all those angled wraps in between each wrap without pulling the, the wire apart. Like so. Let's get to the back of the hook here. And for this tail, we're gonna be using a, a mallard flank feather, but I think we should put just a touch of flash in there first. So for that, let's go with some gold crystal flash. Just a couple strands here. We're gonna probably cut it in half and then fold it over the thread as we tie that in. So we don't need a bunch of it. Just a little highlight, something else on this fly to grab the attention of, of whatever is lurking. Um, in Arizona, where I lived before, Moving out here to Washington, I did chase around a lot of brown trout. And I can tell you that without a doubt, they do eat small brown trout on the regular, any chance they get. Much like rainbow trout eat little rainbow trout, you know the deal. So let's get this tied in here and nothing to it. We can trim this after we wrap the feather if we want. Or we can leave it like that. I think we'll end up trimming it just a touch. All right, so for this first feather for the tail, I'm looking at something that has roughly a, um, one hook length for the majority of these fibers. So that's pretty close. Doesn't have to be exact. All we want to keep in mind is that we will be putting another feather up here in the front behind the bead and that feather should have fibers just a little longer than what you use for your tail section. So get all those fibers down toward the butt of the quill. I'm going to trim off the top here and just get rid of the majority of those feathers. So now you can see this is a pretty clean tie-in point. I'm going to tie this in with the concave side toward the hook shank, which means we leave the pretty convex side on the outside when we wrap. So, and so before I wrap, I'm going to bring 
all these fibers together and coax them toward the back so that they're facing the rear portion of the fly and then I'm going to start wrapping and I like to wrap on at least for the tail on the inside of that quill not on the side of it but on the flatter inside portion and if I do that and I maintain those fibers back the whole time in the end I'll get a, a little snugger wrap on this and I, I won't get a big bushy tail but rather a, a streamlined tail that's you know looks a little bit thin if you will and since we're going for a, a small bait fish look that's a good thing we don't want a huge tail off of the end of this so I'm going to just bring this thread back and clear out any of these fibers I don't want to be part of the tail bring them up and then as I come forward now I've got a clean V between the quill that will be the butt end that we trim out and the tail which is the portion we're going to keep so get a couple thread wraps maybe three in that little V snug a little bit more tightly each time and then get a couple good wraps on that quill pull it back thread and thread in front and now we can trim out and not have to worry about anything moving on that tail and there are just a couple of these flash fibers that are too long and it's okay but this makes me a little bit happier there we go all right finish tying down any of that quill come back to our tie off spot and at this point I'm going to make a loop here for what will be the body and for the body I've blended up some Arizona semi seal gold holographic and I've mixed it with spawn semi seal white silver in a roughly one to one uh, mixture nothing crazy and the reason I did that is I you know on, on small bait fish especially like little brown trout they're not real flashy they don't have a lot of color to them they they're mostly um, transparent and so I, I wanted to dull down that that gold holographic a little so I've got a section here I'll slip that into this loop and as you can see it's it's got still plenty of that gold effect and, and flash but the the white silver really does bring it down a couple notches as far as being too bright and too colorful for a, a small fry pattern or a par even. So now we've got that. I'll slip the little tool in here and we'll get to spinning this stuff up. So we've got about three inches in there, maybe, maybe two and a half. And we don't need to go all the way behind the bead. If we do, it's okay. But we absolutely don't have to. So if this comes short, fine. You, you, it might be even easier if you came up just shy of, of hitting that bead, but we'll see where it ends here. i got a little Swiss CDC brush. Get this brushed out real quickly. And start wrapping this body. And looking at this pattern, you know, tie it up as a, a little brown trout, great. But then go ahead and interpret and you can switch the colors out and match so many different little bait fish using this pattern. Sticklebacks, rainbows, you name it. Um, it's just a, one of those that you can easily adapt to match exactly what your fishing situation or conditions call for. And that's kind of what the name of the game is. If you're going to tie flies, you know, be specific with where you're fishing. Get the most out of it if you can. Alright, this is going to look pretty full here, but I think we'll be in business. As you can see, I'm going to have a little bit of space before that behind that bead, and that's, that's going to work out great for finishing the rest of this fly. Alright, one more wrap there, and now I can tie off the tag end of our loop. So a few good wraps around that thread. Then I'll remove the tool and snug down again and pull back on that tag end and get a few thread wraps back on top of that tag end before you cut it out. Much like that feather quill, now this guy can't move on us and go anywhere. And that is what we want. I'm going to brush out again, loosen up any of those fibers that get trapped when you're wrapping that loop 
forward on your on your fly and it and it's going to happen so make sure you take the, the extra few seconds brush it out again after you've wrapped it up and I just happen to have a little comb here a little Stonfo comb I'm going to brush all those fibers back and if you get into a little knotty section like that just take your time get through it brush it out and good to go there just kind of preen it a little bit with your fingers and it's looking pretty good. All right, so let's get this turned upside here. So this is how it's gonna sit in the water column. And it's going to be in this hook point up. And now for the next element, we're gonna take just some ginger bucktail from Nature Spirit. Oh, excuse me, first let's throw some more flash on here. And I want it to go right on top of this little dorsal and so for the flash, just to keep in mind, we use gold back here in the tail. And so I do have some gold in here, but I also have some medium brown crystal flash mixed in. And I've got roughly six or seven uh, gold fibers and probably 10 of the medium brown. I'm going to just veil that over the thread, bring the thread up, and I'm going to tie it down right there so I can get, there we go, second wrap grabs it and just slip half over each side of the, the hook point there and we can pull that down and it's out of the way. I can finish tying down now. Like so. Alright, so far really liking the look of this. Um, our next element then is the bucktail, ginger bucktail. Don't need a ton of it we're just going to use, I'd say a, a half to a third um, thickness of a, a pencil. That's the pinch we're going for here. And this is just to help maintain a little bit more of that body profile because the bucktail, once it lands on top of that semi seal, won't completely collapse. And so our, our little fry will look like it's, it's trying to become beefy. I think it's working out. So you can see that's going to blend in just nice. And again, these things aren't super colored up as juveniles. So keep that in mind. So I'm just going to get this wrapped on top. And again, split those hairs so that it goes evenly over both sides of the hook point. Get it pushed back and get your fingers in there and bring those fibers down. Now I'm just going to work my way forward here and trim out these butts real quickly and now I can finish tying those down keep it nice and clean in there if you can like so alright so now just a few steps more and we'll be done with this guy all right, so for the next little fun part, we're gonna put just a little bit of a dorsal color in here. And for this, I've got some brown peacock sticks. These are nature spirit. And I'm gonna be up near the eye on one of these. And um, I'm looking for probably 10 to 12 fibers. Uh, I know that sounds like a lot, but once we tie this in, it'll, it'll really cinch it down and then once we get it wet, you'll, you'll see the full effect. And it, it's not too much by any means. Just kind of put the ends at the, the end of where the bucktail, bucktail is, line those up and tie it on top. And this will be our little dor darker dorsal tone and all that good stuff. So it'll, it'll blend in with the natural habitat where fish are found. And if you look at any of the small, younger juvenile fish, that's typically gonna be the case. They're going to have some kind of camouflage, um, patterning or color that lets them just blend into their surroundings. That really makes a big difference in their survival. All right. One, one little more fun trigger that we're gonna to toss in here and then we'll get to our final element. And this is going to be underneath and we're going to put a little hot spot 
of some spawn simi and this is UV slow burn flame and this is going to look like the gills uh, if, if a fish is you know the predator looking for that sign of, of red flashing gills this will emulate that and just in general be one more attracting hot spot so I'm going to tie it in right there as a, a throat if you will and then bring it over itself and tie it back down. Nothing crazy, but sometimes that little hot spot is all it takes uh, to really get a fish's attention and cause them to strike when maybe they wouldn't have. All right, at this point, I'm gonna trim out some of the longest flash fibers that we just tied in on top for our dorsal side. And once we get this out of the vise, of course, it's gonna be a little easier to see in there and trim all that out too. All right, so for our final step here, we have one more mallard feather. I'll try to show you on your side so you can see though, these fibers are going to reach all the way back and, and hit on where we tied that tail in. So again, shorter feather in the back for the tail and then one that's slightly longer in front and you'll have a nice connecting look that makes sense. And we're going to still tie it in the same way. So the concave or inner side facing the shank and the pretty side or the convex side top looking upward. And just like we did before, get those fibers going back. There's one trying to sneak out there. And once those fibers are, are going back somewhat, then we can start wrapping forward. And again, I'm trying to wrap on the inner flat side of that quill. And it may not be the easiest thing, and it, it definitely varies from feather to feather. But if you're patient, practice it a little bit, and you'll, you'll get it. And I, I really like the way it controls the flow of the fibers coming off the quill. Is it necessary? Probably not. Just one of those quirks, I guess, that makes unique uh, flies. And that's, that's how we learn from each other and take what you like from it and adapt your own style and all that good stuff. So there we go. I'm gonna tie this off. A few good thread wraps. Once I've got that seated in there, I'll pull that quill back a little, get some thread wraps in front. Now I can trim that butt end of the quill. One more fiber wanted to stay at the party. There we go. And get that all nice and neat. Get it tidied up. Once you've got that thread, a thread head there, or thread neck, thread collar, whatever you want to call it, to your liking, at that point, go ahead and add two whip finishes. One, and one more. And this is uh, definitely a fly you could put some 3D eyes on, glue them on the sides there, all that good stuff. It's completely up to you. I do enjoy when you guys tie these flies and, and kind of follow along, but it's, it's a lot of fun when people tie their own variation of it and, and send you a couple picks and go, yeah, it, this is, you know, my little take on it, and this is what I caught today. That's always, it's always a fun deal. So if you guys are so inclined and you tie this up, we would love to see what you're, what you're tying, what you're catching, all that. All right, and there we go. A little, little loon clear, head cement, hard head, and now, Let's take this bad boy out for a second. I'm going to turn the vise because we're going to put it back. But if you give me two jiffies, I'm going to junk this into a bowl of water. And this was a request from a viewer. They wanted to see the finished fly 
in wet form, and there you are. Put it back in the vise. Maybe that'll be better. There we go. And there you have it, butter cookie. Thanks so much, you guys, for watching. Uh, hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, please remember to hit like and subscribe, and leave any comments in the in the comment section below. And we look forward to seeing you guys on the water. Thank you.